Bash you to death. <laughs> That's not true, love, is it? Come on. Amen. I'm only telling this because I love you. If anyone says that, brace yourself. <laughs> Pastor, out of love, I'm going to tell you the truth. Oh, no. And you bring out the baton. Run the mile. <laughs> Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by, the, by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Mm. I like that because oh, going Jesus. through what I've gone through, especially like open heart surgery, you begin to think, think about different part, you know, I, I go back and I, I, I say to the consultant, yeah, I'm doing fine, but, you know, I've got this infection in, 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 my, in, in my leg where you cut me and, and oh, that's because this and this, and, and, and oh, it's all numb, that's because they've cut your nerves and this happens and that happens, and they begin to explain to you why your body's acting the way it is. And it's a revelation, really. Because then what it does, it causes you to understand that you need to do this, this and this. Yeah. I needed to join the cardiac uh, rehabilitation gym, and I did that, and you know, slowly but surely, <laughs> surely, <laughs> surely, <laughs> surely <laughs> <to do that. laughs> it began to have its rightful effects on my body. And that's what the Word of God does to us. We, if we know the Word of God, then we can start learning. Well, if I do this, this is going to happen. Yeah. If I do that, I'm yeah. going to blossom. If yeah. I do that, they're going to blossom. Yeah. Amen? Exactly. And we've got to know everything we do yeah. has a cause and effect. Yeah. And if you come in, you know, like, angry at the church and the body of Christ or the pastors or the leaders or whosoever, then it's going to affect them and it's going to affect you. Yeah. It's going to affect the body. Because yeah. yeah. it's a bad attitude. It's a bad heart. Yeah. Not many amens there. Uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, in this passage we've just read, Paul the Apostle describes the how and the why of building up, or in other words, for edification to one another. It's so important that we encourage one another. Amen. You know, I'll admit this, it's just, this is not just for illustration, but I went home last week and I felt really bad that we hadn't got Peter a card. So I said to him, we're going to go out and get one. And we got a card, we forgot it, but then we got another one. <laughs> <laughs> because I, did, I didn't, you know, I saw his little puppy eyes. <laughs> his, you know, it's his birthday here in England, he's away from his mother and, and family. And, you know, and I just thought... We didn't forget, I forgot the card, but we knew the birthday. Anyway, get a bit of mileage out of that one. <laughs> but it's important that we build each other up, isn't it? It really is. <coughs> Encourage one another. Because we see here, the goal is of what everything we do is for edification. And it's edification into maturity. In Jesus Christ. Jesus. It's maturing into Christ likeness. And you don't just get there when you get born again. Amen? Amen. You have to move towards it. That's just the starting point. We move towards that goal together with every part speaking the truth in love. Am I, uh, no, we shouldn't be asking ourselves. Is what I'm going to say to this person going to build them up or bring them down? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell them as it is. I'll tell anyone. Yeah, but you don't like anyone telling you. What goes around comes around. If that's the law you want to live by. But we have to move in the love of God. We have to start speaking the truth in love to one another to grow into maturity. Don't be like children. Saying what you feel. That's why they said kids will always tell you the truth. They don't think about your feelings. <laughs> I remember Denise's cousin many years ago. No, it was the second cousin. And, and the two little boys, and they were, they were at Mary's house, and we were going, and these two boys, was only this big, 
and he, the older one looked up, and he just said what he, he, he felt. Eh, he said, you've got all hairs coming out of your nose. <laughs> he didn't care. His mother had to give him a clout round here, you know. <laughs> but that, if we're like that... <laughs> Anthony, you've got a wonderful haircut. <laughs> you look very smart. <laughs> Uh, it's a lot better to say that, isn't it, and say, what have you done? <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. I mean, I didn't. I didn't genuinely think you got a smart hair. Uh, 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 <laughs> See, the Bible tells us that pastors and leaders do this to equip the teaching, to equip God's people. I'm telling you this now so that you can live this Christian life in harmony with one another. Amen. Speaking the truth in love. Amen. If you can't say it in love, don't say it at all. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Never mind you, you know, we've got enough, I'll tell them, I'll tell them anything in the church today. That's why there's so many church splits. Mm -hmm. Immaturity. <coughs> you see, as we listen to the teachers from the Word of God and that God has given us, it's there. We're there to equip you for the work of the ministry. I've had it said to me, well, you're the pastor. It's your job to, to, to clean the church. It's your job to do that. It's your job to evangelize. It's not my job. Because I'm in ministry. I'm not in employment, even though in some sense I am by the, 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 the world standards. But first and foremost, I'm appointed by God. Absolutely. Not Hallelujah. just me, but anyone in the Hallelujah, position of Jesus. leadership. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you don't respect the pastor, then at least respect God. Amen. Amen. Who ordained it. You see, and as we mature, we can turn this equipping and become more and more unified in faith and in love. We've learned in the last few weeks that we were devoted, or should be devoted, to change. But you know one thing we should be devoted to? Discipleship. Because it says there, it, to the fullness of Christ. That in the fullness of Christ, that's talking about maturing. It's a mature manner. It's our responsibility and leaders to bring you to a, a full maturity in Christ. Jesus. Not continually being spoon fed. Mm. See, the church exalts its God, it exalts God and edifies itself as part of this discipleship work of Christ's great commission. That's in Matthew 28, 19, 20, where Jesus said, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Hallelujah. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That is the goal of leadership, is to mature you, to bring you to that place of maturity in Christ, that you can go and do likewise. Amen. Amen. Why is it so difficult in a church, that formula? Yet in the world, we do it so naturally, don't we? Yeah. We meet, we fall in love, we get married, we have children, we teach them how to love and to grow and to mature, till they can get older, and they do the same thing. It's called discipleship. Mm. Uh, but yet, you know, people seem to do that without even thinking. Yet when we get into the church, everything's a struggle. Mm. But all we're simply told is to go and teach them to observe all things that I've taught you. That's great. That's what a true disciple is. Learning to become more like Jesus. It should happen in every corner of the church. Or every corner of the church's life. Mm -hmm. yeah. From fathers leaving their homes in God's word. Because we call the priest of the house. Mm -hmm. 
It's an awesome responsibility. Mm -hmm. I've not always yeah. accomplished that, but I'm maturing and I'm getting there. So spiritual brothers and sisters meeting to encourage one another in the truth. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to do. Well, I don't like prayer meetings. Well, there's a problem. I don't like talking to my wife. I don't like talking to her. Maybe that's true. But that shows a problem. Mm. If you can't communicate together, there's a problem. Mm, if we can't communicate through prayer to the Father, there's a problem. Amen. See, we're called to be loving, to speak the truth in love. Yes. And, and our responsibility is, if you open the word of God, it's tender as it is. That's why many times, you know, when we're away from God or we've got a bad attitude, this is the last place we're going to go. Because I can guarantee you, God will turn you to the very page and that scripture will jump out and show you what needs to be done. Just to close, he said, the church exalts God and edifies each other through the work of loving one another. We are to love one another by admonishing and encouraging each other on a regular basis yes. mm -hmm. with, the, with God's <coughs> word. That's what speaking the truth in love means. Please. See, as we close, all of us are called to toil together to support the formal structures of the church. Those structures that assist us <coughs> the exaltation of God and the edification of the body. In other words, Sunday service, prayer meetings, uh, house groups, uh, evangelism, breakfast times at, at, at the restaurant, all those things are not just to fill a space on your Amen. Calendar, Amen. but it's Amen. to come together to encourage one another. Amen. You know, I want to tell you, we were greatly encouraged as we, we, we met last week for the breakfast. You Hallelujah, know, Jesus. Quite a lot of people came and it was good, you know, and it was, it's good, genuine fellowship. Amen. Now, if you can't make it, you can't make it. But I'm telling you now, if you can make it, make it because you'll get encouraged yeah. and we'll get encouraged and we'll all go way up it. Yeah. Amen. 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 It's such a wonderful <laughs> time and we can't understand sometimes in our life why people don't want these things. Mm -hmm. I just think, wow, this is great. I love this family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you're encouraging and edifying one another. That's why I love coming to church. I love coming to church. Wendy said this morning how it invigorates her, you know, coming yeah. to church. And, yeah. and it, it, it does, it fills a need in our life. Yeah. But it also fills a need in somebody else's life. Yeah. When we're expressing that love that God's put in us through worship. Through meeting together. That's why King David said, I was glad, very glad, when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord today. Amen. Mm -hmm. I was glad. It's a joy. It's a joy in my life to be in the house of God. I can have, you know, I remember when I was working nights and I had a rough week, you know, with the, some of the residents. It was a tough time. And come Wednesday, we met at Bible uh, midweek service. And I was so encouraged that the time I got to work that night, all the worries of the previous days had gone. And I said, Lord, I'm truly glad <coughs> I went to church tonight. The devil wants me to stop going. He wants me to stay in bed. You've got too much on your plate. But that's the time we should say, I was glad, very glad. And I'm going to make somebody else's day. And I'm going to encourage I'm going to help someone come to maturity. I want people to know that here they, we care about them. In my life, I care about them. Okay, we're not perfect. We're, we're all on a journey together, and we're all working together for good. Let's bow our heads right now. Hallelujah. Just as we close. I don't want this just to be another message, although it is, but... I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance these things. Mm. 
you are a key player in this organization of the church. Not this church, but the body of Christ. We read earlier that there's neither Greek, there's neither Jew, there's neither circumcised or uncircumcised. We're all one in Christ. We're in this together. And the devil's role in all this is to stop you believing that. To make you think you're all alone and no one cares. What a sad, sad situation if you're in that, in a church congregation. But if, it, if you are, I'll let me encourage you. Put yourself out there. Go to a study, go to a prayer, come to church. Be a part of it. Don't isolate yourself. The devil's job or his, his work is to isolate you. You know, and just because he's a wolf, the Bible says, and the wolf always isolates the weak and the, the, the sickly of the, of the sheep. He isolates them from the rest of the flock so that he can devour them. And that's how the devil wants to do it. He, he's, he's, that, he's that wolf. Sometimes he comes in sheep's clothing. Don't be fooled. We know. The Holy Spirit will tell you. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that your word is sure and Lord it's a sure foundation. I pray for each and every one, including me and Denise, that we might be examples of the Christ-like uh, life, Lord, that we might direct people to you. And when people see our actions, they might just glorify you and say, there's something different here. These people are, you know, have got such love for one another. I'm not talking about the sloppy or goppy. I'm talking about genuinely to serve for one another. And yes, we're not all there. We can build on it. It's what maturity is all about. We can mature today. Or, or, or set our goal to mature in these areas. There's people watching us. There's people needing our testimony. There's people needing what you've got. And the devil wants to isolate you. So, in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Just before we disperse, we've got some birthdays, <coughs> announcements.